Hi there, my name is Mark and I'm a junior doctor working in Dublin. I wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about quarantining and social distancing, why you've been asked to do it and why it's so important. I'm not speaking on behalf of the HSE or any hospital group, I'm speaking to you as someone working in healthcare. I've heard my colleagues express worries about the coming weeks and months and I've heard friends of mine who don't work in healthcare query why we need quarantine and why social distancing is important. The reason my colleagues and I are worried is because the numbers we're facing are staggering. The number of daily cases of COVID-19 in Ireland is increasing at an exponential rate and the curve is still very steep. If the predictions are correct, and they have been so far, we're looking at 15,000 cases by April. Of these 15,000 cases, we hope 80% can be managed at home or in the community, but 20% at least, 3,000 or more, will require hospital admission. Of that 3,000, between 10 and 12%, just over 300, will require a critical care bed. The issue is we only have 255 critical care beds currently. That's why it's so important to flatten the curve, because flattening the curve means minimising the traffic coming through our hospital doors and hopefully reducing the demand for those critical care beds that are already occupied, by the way, by people with heart attacks, strokes, in comas, serious infections and other conditions. That's why social distancing is important. That's why quarantine matters. COVID-19, or coronavirus, is a virus. It can cause a severe pneumonia in 20% of patients who've tested positive for the disease. To treat this pneumonia will require hospitalisation, and in some cases, admission to an intensive care unit for ventilation. In some cases, the virus can unfortunately cause death. It is transmitted via droplets. This can be through a cough or through a sneeze. If you sneeze into your hand and shake hands with someone else, you pass on the virus. If you don't wash your hands properly, you could pass on the virus. If someone coughs or sneezes into their hand and shakes your hand and you touch your face, the virus can enter your body through your eyes, through your nose or through your mouth. It's that easy. In short, the more people you meet, the more people you encounter, the greater your chances of getting or passing on the virus are. If you cough into your hand, the only way of not transmitting the virus is to wash your hands. You can't wash your hands if you're shopping in Tesco or in Pennies. As of yesterday, March 21st in Ireland, we've had 785 confirmed cases of COVID-19. 30% of people have required hospital treatment, and we've unfortunately admitted 13 people to intensive care units. That's 13 people who are fighting for their lives, and they may not survive. The truth is, it's more than the 785 cases. They're just the confirmed cases. There are hundreds at this stage, probably thousands more people awaiting test results or awaiting testing or walking around with a cough or a sore throat or short of breath or with a fever, ignoring or dismissing their symptoms, but they are spreading the virus. They are spreading it to taxis, to buses, to shops and supermarkets. They are spreading it to places that you and I would normally go without a second thought. Of the 785 confirmed cases, 42% have been as a result of community transmission. That means that someone got the virus, but they don't know from who or where. They could have picked it up outside, at the parks, at the playground, in a supermarket, at a petrol station. They could have picked it up from someone who sat at the coffee table 30 minutes before them. It's so easy. How many people have you been in contact with over the last two days? How many people have you come within two metres of, whether you brushed past them in the park or overtook them on the path or were in the same shopping aisle as them? How many people could have coughed and sneezed on you? How many hands could what you were handling have touched? How many packages or surfaces, keypads, door handles, petrol pumps, hand railings, pedestrian crossing buttons did you touch? How many people could you have spread the virus to or got the virus from? There are so many ways to contract or pass this virus on, no matter how careful you think you're being. And that's why the most effective way of curbing the spread of the virus is to quarantine, and that means staying at home. If we had half the numbers of community conditions, if we brought it down from 42 to 20%, that would mean 3,000 less cases for the hospital in April, down from 15,000 to 12,000. And most importantly, it reduces the number of people needing critical care beds from over 300 to 240. It mightn't sound like much of a difference, but it is huge. It is huge. The truth is, 
as much as we try social distancing and it's a good idea in theory, it's incredibly hard to implement. Ireland is not designed for social distancing. The cafes and coffee shops were busy this weekend. The parks were full. It's a nice day, you want to meet your friend, you want to bring your family out, I get it. But it's impossible to keep a distance of two metres in most Irish coffee shops. And if you go to the park, it's nearly impossible to stop your kids playing with other kids. They're kids, it's what they do. And if you do get coffee out somewhere, you don't know who sat at the table before you an hour ago. You don't know if they had a cough, you don't know if they were wearing gloves. The distance between people over a coffee table is normally less than two metres. If you want to do social distancing, there is no point in going to Tesco and giving someone a two metre wide berth at the entrance only to brush past or squeeze between two people to get milk minutes later. And I get why people want to preserve some semblance of normality. And I get why you might want to ensure local enterprise and local coffee shops are supported. But this time we have to prioritise our health service over our economy. If you want to exercise, please do it in your house. If you have a back garden, in your back garden. If you have a front yard, in your front yard. Around your house or locally. If you want to get some coffee and meet a friend, tell them to wait a month. Make a brew or a pot at your house and call them or Skype them. I get that it's a worrying time and people want to continue doing normal things, but these are not normal times. They're strange times. There's lots of people uncertain, worried. They've lost jobs, they're facing financial insecurity. Maybe you're stuck at home, working from home, fed up at home. You feel useless or helpless. You are helping so much more than you think by staying at home. You are saving lives by being in quarantine. You are preventing the virus spreading and infecting someone else. If you have a temperature or are short of breath or have an unexplained cough, please isolate yourself. Please call your GP straight away. If not, and you feel fine and you feel fresh, please stay at home. There's so many things that we're doing that can wait. And there's no point giving out about young people having house parties if you're going to Tesco to buy Pringles. Don't go to Tesco to buy flour for baking. It can wait. Don't go to the local shop to buy the milk and the newspaper. It can wait. Don't go browsing in town. Don't go to pennies. Who are you buying for? It can wait. So many things can wait. And they'll be there for us after waiting if we act properly now. And please, please stop shaking hands and embracing and hugging and kissing. I saw so many people do it over the weekend. I know it's weird not to do it. We're Irish, we're affectionate and we're welcoming and it's bred into our DNA. It feels weird or unkind or strange not to greet someone warmly as you normally would, but it's so important that you don't. You might think it's a harmless peck in the cheek or a handshake and what's the damage? The damage is you are giving a lifeline to a virus that thousands of people are working so hard to control and eradicate. And this is not meant to panic you, but it's important that we know what we're facing here. You can't dismiss it as a flu-like illness. It's more than that. It has taken lives all over the world. It has taken lives in this country. This message isn't set to alarm you, but to remind you that while we have good measures in place, there is work to do, and to encourage you to do the work, and to beg you to please follow the precautions and to remind you this is still within our control and if we act properly we can flatten the curve and we can minimize the burden on our health service. This virus is serious, it can't be dismissed or mollycoddled but to control it it will require everyone young and old to come together and to act now. Healthcare staff around the country will be working tirelessly over the coming weeks and months to ensure that your loved ones and those affected with COVID-19 are treated accordingly. But you can save them so much hassle, you can save lives in the community if you stay at home and take the necessary precautions. It's essential that we learn and take note of what's happening around the world. I watch the numbers and read about the devastation in Italy every day. It's scary and it's terrifying. But we can avoid it. I don't want to wake up in three weeks time and have to tell myself or my friends or my mother or father that we could have done more because we can act now. So over the coming weeks please don't be selfish, don't take risks, don't take chances. Please be safe, please be smart, please wash your hands and please please stay at home. Thanks for watching.